Hey my people, back at Farmer Pat here. I'm doing a quick um, video. It's early morning and I came out to do some planting before it got too hot. It gets too hot. I just planted my June plum and I planted a couple more papayas. And I am ready to plant my sweet corn. So you guys, if you guys remember, I hope you didn't miss my video last week where I did a video on seeds I'm planting in February. So that was exactly one week ago today. And look at this corn. So I planted the cor this corn um, in under the dome. For the first time I used Jiffy Natural and Organic Seed Starting Mix. I got this from, from Walmart. And the seeds that I used, the, the corn that I used is Ferry Morse corn, sweet corn, early sun glow hybrid. So I would say this is absolutely a winner. Um, the combination of the Jiffy and the Ferry Morse and this container is an absolute winner. Um, I also compared um, on my video that I did yesterday, I also showed how my gunga peas or pigeon peas that I planted over a month ago are about the same size as these that I planted one week ago. So I would definitely say this combination is good. Anyway, today's video is really about planting up my sweet corn. Um, I didn't realize they were gonna grow this quickly, but in one week they're ready to plant out. <clears throat> So I chose a spot by the side of my house. I wasn't sure what I was gonna plant here, but what I did was I cleared an area of weeds. So you see, it's very, my entire garden is very dense with weeds. So I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna try and plant it, plant it directly in the ground. Um, I cleared the, cleared the weeds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my um, Kellogg's organic raised bed and potting mix. I'm gonna add it directly here without putting concrete concrete under under it. I mean, sorry, without putting cardboard under it. Usually I put the cardboard, then I put the mix on. But I'm, I think the soil is very, very sandy. So it definitely needs to be enriched. And what I noticed about this soil is no matter how, how um, deep you dig, you find no earthworms. So this soil really needs to be enriched. So what I'm gonna do is put my raised bed potting mix in here then I'm gonna plant directly in here so I'll be right back so before I start I want to show you um, what I did was I put cardboard along the outside of the bed and then I'm gonna mulch along the outside of the bed um, I'm leaving the inside basically free of cardboard except for the edges the reason I make sure that all the cardboard overlaps is that I don't want any weeds to get in through any of the cracks so I make sure all the cardboard overlaps um, on my other bed the, the big beds that I have on the other side every single spot that I, I didn't have covered with a tarp the weeds got in so this is why it's important to always overlap um, what I'm also gonna do what I also already did is in uh, along with cleaning out the area I took a fork and I kind of tilled it up a bit because as I said there's no organic a matter in here there's like no life so I don't have to worry about disturbing worms or disturbing anything because this this soil is basically void of life so I'm gonna start adding in material what I'm gonna do is add my Kellogg's raised bed mix I'm also gonna add a little bit of carbon your compost I have corn is basically like a grass right and what do grasses like grasses like the same thing or leafy greens like likes a lot of nitrogen so I'm gonna be adding some compost and I'm also going to be adding a couple of handfuls of blood meal which is basically almost pure pure nitro nitrogen. I'm gonna do my best to stay in frame but I only have two hands so right now what I'm doing is taking a fork and I'm just gently moving not gently I'm roughing up the soil. This is the native soil I'm roughing up and then now I'm gonna start adding my my good soil. As I add each bag, I'm going to mix it into the soil. So this bed is a uh, three by four so that means I buy one foot high that means it's 12 cubic feet so I think I'm gonna add about 
maybe eight cubic feet of soil. Each bag is two cubic feet. So I need four bags of soil. But I'm also gonna be using compost. So I may not need a full four bags. So I'm breaking this up. It's a bit lumpy. Breaking it up and mixing it in. When I'm done doing this, I'll show you what it looks like. All right. Piling it up on the, along the edges to hold that, con that cardboard box down. And I'm mixing in the sand with the good soil. Basically, I'm doing this for only the bottom layer. Um, after that, I'll just make sure it's broken up on the top layers. All right. So let me get a bag of common oak compost now. Um, corn is actually a shallow rooted plant. So what I may have to do is take the corn up as it grows. On the bag it says, 65 days from seed to harvest. So I should be harvesting corn within a couple months. We're now at the end of February. Um, so we should be harvesting corn sometime probably the end of April or May. All right, so just added a layer of corn manure compost. And I'm gonna add a handful of blood meal. I'm just gonna spread it evenly across the bed. <clears throat> then I'm gonna add some more soil now. <clears throat> I'm not really measuring it, I'm just adding. One of the reasons why I added the blood meal so early um, is because I want when when the plants grow I don't want I don't like to add everything on the top layer because once the plants grow and it gets established when it goes down deeper when the roots go down deeper I wanted to get a second burst of energy that's why I added I'm adding a layer of blood meal towards the bottom then on the last layer at the top I'm gonna add some more blood, blood meal so to get the nutrition in the beginning of this growth cycle and it will also get the nutrition towards the end. These bags are heavy. They're like 50 pounds. Ah. Guys, not only is gardening rewarding health-wise and food-wise, it's also so good for your, your health, your, your energy, your strength. Because I can tell you, I'm getting a whole lot stronger and getting a whole lot of exercise. I don't need to go to a gym. I get so much exercise just being in the yard. All right, so let me mix this up and then add another bag. <clears throat> so each layer has a lot of clumps. So I am making sure I break these clumps up with each layer. Always break it up so that when the roots, the young tender roots, start spreading they can go all the way in all right I'm gonna speed this up now All right, so I'm done. I'm done, I added three and a half bags. I ended up using three and a half bags because as I said, corn is a shallow rooted plant and I do plan on, um, corn is a shallow rooted plant and I do plan on adding a lot of straw to the top. It's also gonna be my first time using straw, but straw is great, it breaks down and it feeds the organic matter. So straw is really good. As a matter of fact, a lot of gardeners prefer, soil, prefer straw to mulch because 
they say that the, the mulch um, robs the nitrogen from the plants. Um, and I find that that may happen temporarily, but all in all, mulch also breaks down, especially if you're using natural mulch. But now that I'm living in an area where there is straw available, I'm trying straw. So um, what I just did was, since this is a top layer, I added some more nitrogen to the soil, and I'm just going through with my hand and mixing in the nitrogen. I mean the blood meal. Blood meal which is basically pure nitrogen. All right, blood meal is really dried blood. I believe it's the blood of cows. Um, so this is what I'm doing. It's a good organic way of feeding your soil. So here we go, our bed is ready. What I'm gonna do before I plant my corn is I'm gonna break this up a little bit more because look, see? The roots can't get through this you want to make sure it's well broken up so i'm going to take my fork just go through break this up again and then i'm going to go ahead and start I, i'm going to break it up then i'm going to water it well because i do prefer to water um to plant into very moist soil rather than um plant my my tender seedlings and then water so um i'll be right back i'm gonna break this up then water it all right, so let me show you what it looks like now. I soaked the soil well. As I, as I said, corn is really in the same family as grass. So our grass likes to be nicely watered. So this is nicely watered. All the clumps are broken up and this is ready to receive my seedlings. All right, so let's, let's get started. So um, it's a little tricky. Let me see, I might have to put the camera down. Uh, I'm gonna put my finger underneath and pull up to gently bring it up. Wow, guys, look. Look at that beautiful, beautiful root, in, root system. Look at that. Look at that, it's full of roots. So corn likes to be spaced at least a foot apart. So I'm gonna lay these out first and then I'm gonna put them in. So let's just lay them out for now. Making sure I space them out properly before I actually put them in in the soil. So this cell had two seed seedlings. Look at that. Look at those roots, guys. This is seven days, seven days. And in three days, it had already come up, but I just, I'm now having time to separate it. It took literally three days to come up. The package says seven to 12 days to germinate. It took three days. So I would say, you know, probably the starter mix helped and probably that container I used helped. All right, I'm gonna put this down. Oh, trying to be gentle, all right. Look at that, seven days. So I'm gonna go about one foot, it's about a foot. This is a four foot bed, so I should be able to get four across. These have such well-developed roots. Very, very happy with this. Very happy with these results. And I'm looking forward to having some sweet corn. So I'm gonna lay them this way. Go closer to the edge. So that's my first row. So I only have three more corns. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put these on the outer edge since these will get be ready first and I'm gonna put another layer of corn kernels. I'm gonna plant another layer directly in the soil. So this is why it's good to have only one per cell. You can see, I just have to break it. It grew into each other. So that's about one foot apart. Then we get the last one. So I only planted seven kernels and I got seven and I got seven corns. So now I'm gonna plant some seeds directly into the bed. Um, a good idea if you don't have a lot of space is to plant more than one crops in the same bed, right? 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm putting some corn here. The instructions say go about an inch and a half down. So I'm, that's about an inch and a half. So I put one there, put one here. One here. And I'll put one at the end. So the reason I put these in the middle is because I probably may or may not harvest the outside other ones first. It probably won't make a difference since it's only one week apart. But I just planted seven. I just planted um four more kernels. So let's make it since so we can have twelve in all. I'm putting one more on the corner here. So I'm gonna have 12 stalks of corn coming up. All right. I'll put this back in the container, in the bag for next time. So now let's plant our corn. I'm just gonna use my hand to make a hole. Deep enough, spread the roots out. Wow, look at that root. Look how long this root is, guys. Look how long that root is. That's crazy. That is crazy. So I'm going to make sure it's deep enough so the root can go all the way down. I don't want to compress the root, so I'm going all the way down. Look, see? I went all the way down to the bottom so I can spread this root all the way out. Then I'm going to push the soil back in around it. And there we have our first corn planted. I'm going to do the same here. I'm gonna stretch out that root, that beautiful long, long, long root. Wow, this is awesome. And go all the way down. I'm literally all the way down. And then I'm gonna put that corn in. And I'm gonna repeat that eight more times, seven, seven more, six more times. And just like that, or corn is planted in. There are the seven corns, kernels that I planted. And of course I have the row going down the middle. What I'm gonna do now is, you know, interplant a couple things. So I think I'm gonna, I've had these um, purple potatoes sitting forever to plant. I'm gonna put like a couple potatoes in with it. Potatoes also like nitrogen. So I think I'm gonna plant a couple of these in. So I have two different kinds of potatoes um, and I'm just going to try and avoid, I know I planted my row in the middle, I'm going to put it like, just to try, um, potatoes usually take several months to be ready, corn will be harvested in two months. So this is a red skin potato, I sliced it in half, um, the important thing to note if you're going to slice a potato in half, make sure it has a couple sh shits, which is the, the eyes. So it has a few eyes on here, I slice it in half, but I waited a couple days for, for this to scab over. If you slice it and put it straight in the garden, it's gonna rot. But when you slice it and, and let the other, this part become like a scabbed over, th that'll be good to plant. I'm gonna plant a couple potatoes here. I'm gonna plant it with the eyes pointing up and just see what happens. They both like nitrogen, so they should it should go well with with this. Put a purple one, a red one. I'm gonna plant another um, bed right beside it. That would probably be all potatoes, but just stuck a couple little potatoes to keep it company in the meantime. Um, so those will be developing underground, and they'll be ready um, months after. Put a couple more on this side. Put one here. With potatoes, you usually mound them up. As they grow, you mound them up with additional dirt or you can use additional straw. Um, so I'm gonna be putting straw on this bed. So I think this is just an experiment, guys. All right. All right, so my corn bed is ready. Um, I'm gonna put some straw on it now. Then I am done. All right, and finished, I just added straw to the top, finished covering it with straw. And now we just have to wait for our delicious sweet corn to grow. Um, one thing I didn't mention, well, I did mention that 
you plant your corn uh, approximately one foot apart um but read instructions on your individual bag each corn is different some corn you plant 12 inches apart some corn 18 inches some 24 inches it's very important that you don't just grow your corn in a straight line you grow them in what they call a block meaning you plant you can have two or three rows where you have them like one foot apart so you see it mine is like basically a block i have one foot one foot one foot one foot it's basically a block and i have like several blocks here the reason is the corn has as a corn grows it has a male tassel that has the pollen and it has a female silk right so the the pollen has to get from the male tassel to the female silk the female silk is basically what's on the corn when you buy corn and you open it up and you see those strings that's called the female silk and you know there are times when you eat corn we buy corn you open it up and there are some undeveloped kernels and that's because the pollen didn't get from the male tassel to the female silk silk so you want to make sure that your corn is well pollinated and by planting them like the way I planted them here in blocks there's more possibility as the wind blows make sure you, you know especially when you're in an area that's wind it's great as the wind blows the pollen is more likely to, to, to leave from the male tassel and hit the female silk it may not hit the female silk of it's of the, the same stalk but to hit the female silk of the stalks that are next to it so that's why corn is best planted in a block pattern so that way it optimizes um, pollination and if the, if the pollination is optimized that means you're gonna get some nice fat juicy um, ears of corn Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Um, I have so much more content that I'm going to be bringing out. Um, I am planting up a storm at my new backyard farm and I'm just totally thrilled that you chose to follow me on this journey. Okay guys, let's get out there now. Go ahead and plant a seed. Let's grow and eat some of our food together. And don't forget to share this video and share it with me and with others what you're growing. Bye now.